everybody, welcome back to the fish room. Uh, so my name's Lou and today we have a delivery from Peru and some plants as well. Um, now there's a couple of sensitive species in here, um, like green brocus quarries, which uh, I need to get out of here um, and actually drip acclimate. Um, they are an exception to my usual rule of not messing around with them too much when they arrive. Um, and yeah, a couple of uh, pretty chunky um, whip tails and much frozen things that I need to get in the tent quickly. Um, so I'm just going to um, sort these guys out and then hopefully once I've got them in the tent so you guys will be able to see what I've got. Um, just because they're going to be a little bit like last delivery where they're all bagged up uh, all together and they're um, those sort of like floppy bags where you can be able to see. Um, so yeah, let's, uh, let's get these guys sorted and we've also got some plants as well today. Um, so just trying to think of a little bit different. Um, so we'll get those up in those top that we talked about in the last video. Alright, so let's get going. Alrighty then, so we have the little Royal Acaras. Um, so I've got a large one of these, which I will show you in just a second, but these are really, really lovely. Um, they have come in slightly smaller uh, than I was imagining them. Uh, there's a couple slightly bigger ones in here. Um, but they are going in with the flash placos um, in this tank that I've brought here. Um, and they all look really good to me, actually. They're just like really tiny versions of my big one. Um, but he could probably swallow these whole, so but they're very, very sweet. Um, so they all came individually bagged in little tiny bags. So what I did is, um, while I was uh, unpacking them, I had like an inch of water to start with in here and then just um, opened out every single one of these bags. Um, and then while I was doing that, I had my drip line um, going in here just to keep the water going um, and some detox fire for the aforementioned ammonia problems. Um, and yeah, they're a bit freaked out by me right now. Um, so we will get them in their tank. So I'm just gonna sift all of this through a net because I do not want this in my tank because uh, it's like half bag water um, and yeah we'll just see how they go so in theory when they grow up I think they're gonna look like this um, so I originally thought this was a yellow Akara um, and then as uh, time has gone on I'm pretty sure he's a royal Akara um, still not 100% sure he's probably one of the nicest fish I've ever had actually he's very very sweet he gets on with everybody um, unlike him um, and he has just um, become this gorgeous, dopey thing. Um, probably sort of similar sort of personality to something like a true parrot, to be honest. Um, but no, he's very, very sweet. He gets on with everybody. He never causes any uh, fuss. Um, and he's super friendly, super dopey, and really, really gorgeous to look at. Um, camera doesn't really do him justice, but there's just so much detail. Um, and yeah, so um, that's basically why I ordered them, because... Um, they're a very, very nice fish, and he's about as big as they're going to get. Um, so about seven, eight inches tops, um, including the tail. So yeah, he's just a, a, a nice fish. It's a little bit of a smaller option to something like an Oscar, um, but maybe a little bit bigger and a little bit more um, personality than something like a Geophagus, which is going to be sort of more concerned about what it's doing um, instead of what you're doing. Everybody in here has eaten a little bit too much today, so um, the Oscars especially are a little bit shocked because they have um, had quite a lot of food and they're acting very surprised. They don't really know what to do with themselves because they just feel so full. And yeah, these two have been going at it all day. My red tiger motta is super fired up today, looking absolutely gorgeous. Alrighty then, so next up, uh, just about to get these guys out of their bags. Uh, I'm really excited about these, these are amazing. Um, the camera isn't really going to do their size justice, but these guys are about uh, like 8 inches long. Um, so they're like a really good sized um, twig catfish, or like a falloella um, with a really long nose. Um, so these are really, really cool looking. They've come in super healthy, they look amazing. Um, so yeah, let's um, get these guys acclimated. I imagine these are going to be more of an algae eating uh, Falawella. It doesn't look like they've got the, uh, the sort of mouths like some of the whiptail species, um, like the uh, Hemidontichus acupensivrinus, which are also really, really long, long nosed. Actually, I think these guys are going to rival the acupensivrinus for having long noses. These are amazing. Cool. Um, so yeah, we've got uh, two of them in there and there's some even bigger ones in here. Um, so yeah, let's get them out of these bags now that they're ready. Um, I'm just going to do that very, very gently because these guys like to get stuck in nets. Um, they're a lot spikier than they look um, and you don't want to get those noses stuck in a net either. Um, I've had it many times. We've got the end of that stuck in a net and it's such a pain to get them out um, safely. So I just want to avoid that. 
Um, so yeah, let's uh, get these guys in. These are so cool. So excited about these. Oh my goodness, these are so, so cool. Um, I might actually have to move these into a bigger tank uh, once they've uh, finished um, quarantine, actually. But these are just mega. Oh my goodness. Um, so yeah, this is a two-foot tank. Uh, there's a couple of clown placos left in here, actually. Um, but the clown placos have been moved up uh, with the king tigers. But I always miss a few. Um, so yeah, these guys have got this uh, two-foot tank to themselves. Oh, sorry, my elbow slipped. Um, wow. These are really, really cool. I was not expecting to like these as much as I do. They are massive. Amazing. So the green brocus have gone over here in this tank because uh, there's like 30 of them. Um, they are doing really, really well. Some of their barbels are a little bit burnt, um, but actually they're already nosing around looking for food and stuff. And actually just in the natural light from the windows here, they look amazing. My goodness. Um, so yeah, that was a, a success with these absolute jewels from Peru. The uh, green Brocus, uh, Brocus Splendor, I believe they are. Um, so yeah, a couple with slightly red gills, just had a little bit of ammonia in that bag, um, but that is really, really good. So these guys are in with the, um, the sports size and the puffers. I moved the uh, super porches out. Um, so these guys are just in uh, this tank here where um, you just have got the sports size and the albinos. Um, but yeah, a couple of, the, couple of them, their faces are pretty warm. Um, but they should be all right. I don't know whether that one's got a bit of a longer face. That, there might be a couple of different species mixed up in there. I don't know. Um, you can never really tell until they grow up a little bit. Um, but these are about half grown and they're absolutely gorgeous. They can go in a massive range of temperatures and uh, water conditions. Um, they are amazing and they look incredible as a big shoal as well. I used to have a shoal of 17 of these in my seven foot while the ar arowana was growing out and they looked incredible in there. Um, and yeah, this is the best shipment of brokies I've ever had, so these are doing really, really well. They're super tough little fellows, um, but I think a lot of places just give up on them too quickly and don't take enough time while acclimating them, um, and they have a few more losses, um, but they are phenomenal. That one does definitely look different. Um, I don't know. We'll have a look. Uh, it can be a little bit difficult to tell where they've um, got their warm faces, because um, it might just be making their faces look a little bit more pointy. Um, so yeah, I'll probably put some meds in for these, obviously going to worm them as well. That one's got nice little barbels. Um, and then yeah, they, they don't look skinny or anything, they look really, really good. Ah, okay, so the, uh, the little uh, Akaras are doing really, really well actually. They seem to be pretty settled and pretty comfortable actually, um, now that they are in here. My camera doesn't really want to focus on them because we've got reflections coming in through the door. Um, but yeah, no, as you can see, they're... Uh, very very cute and uh, yeah doing really really well actually I really like these so hopefully they will grow quite quickly um, I've just uh, actually popped the temperature up a little bit um, just because I want them to grow quite quickly um, but we'll feed them lots of food keep them nice and warm and then hopefully they will be uh, big enough that they can go into appropriately sized tanks uh, very soon very very cute um, and there are some flush pluckers in here as well uh, I've got two that I'm just working on now you can just about make out some stripes just under this log but um obviously I want to keep the lights off until tomorrow morning um, and yeah so we've got um, I think three flush pluckers I have a feeling it's a uh, one male uh, oh no two males and one female at least you can just about make out this flush plucker here um, but they are massive, they are full grown flash blackos, L204, um, Panaculus albivermis, I believe they are. Alrighty then, so it's the next day and um, I did some research and I believe these to be um, Phalloella platyrhynchus, platyrhynchus um, which uh, makes sense because rhynchus or rhynchus uh, being something to do with nose as in like rhinoloricaria stuff like that, rhino, it's all uh, stuff to do with nose. Um, but no, they're double the size they should be um, for Smith's Falawella. Um And yeah, in particular, I have been looking at the scoop patterns on their bellies, because um, these guys have a very particular one um, around their chin. And also, um, you've got to look at like their mouths, the scale patterns, that kind of thing, because there was a couple of different species that look quite similar to these. But no, so these are uh, very cool. 
whiptails, um, apparently the males are going to have spikes down the sides of their nose. Um, so like this fellow here, I would probably say is a male. You can't really see it on camera, um, but his nose is kind of like fuzzy down the sides. So you'd think that he's probably going to have um, like odontodes down the side of his nose. Um, whereas this individual here, I would say would be a female uh, because the nose is very smooth. So yeah, um, a lot of shops will mislabel things because they come mislabeled on the lists. And unless you have got somebody there who knows their stuff or is willing to sit there and double check the species on every single fish, um, it happens an awful lot. So some people might have these out there and they might think that they've got Smith's father wellers and um, never really thought about it before and um, don't realise. Uh, it happens with things like the mustard spot placos. They come in labelled as vampire placos. Um, vampire placos don't come from Peru, so a lot of people have what they think is a vampire placo and they're actually mustard spot placos, uh, which stay a lot smaller and have a completely different diet. So, just uh, something to bear in mind sometimes. It's not necessarily the shop's fault, it's just, uh, you know, imagine if um, this was a really big shop and I had like a thousand tanks. Um, I wouldn't be able to double check all of the species, unless it was something I noticed. So, yeah. These are very, very cool though, so I'm probably going to keep a pair of these, and then the other three have already uh, got home, which is really, really nice. Um, so yeah, these guys are just going to be worm now. So we deworm everybody with a uh, shrimp and snail uh, safe wormer, Levimasol. It's not safe for things like pond snails, um, but that goes through them, two weeks, uh, two rounds of it to kill off the second uh, lot, and then yeah, it's just a, a case of finding out what foods they like and getting on to prepared foods because obviously these guys have come from the wild so they don't know what an algae wafer is or what a pellet is yet uh, so you've got to introduce them to that. And all of our newbies from Colombia are doing really really well. Um, the lovely L129 Colombian zebras seems to be quite a bold bunch. As time goes on, they are becoming more and more uh, L129-like and uh, becoming shyer, but especially this one um, sat on the top of the rock here. That is, like, his place. Um, so I've just popped some food in. These two have just been having a little bit of a wrestle, so they are um, just uh, catching their breath. I've got one really, really tiny one that's really, really cute. So, yeah, they're just quite feisty. But they are a good bunch, these. They are doing really, really well. Nice round bellies. And our gorgeous little L397 babies are doing really well now that I've um, swept them out of the cave with Dad. Um, and I've been trying to get a good look, um, but Dad actually might be on eggs again. Um, I think I could see an egg um, by his nose, but I mean, these are absolutely gorgeous. And they're getting super, super active. Just trying to keep them really well fed at the moment because they didn't necessarily have the best start because Dad held on to them for a little bit longer than he should have. Um, but no, they're definitely growing visibly every day. Just absolutely divine, tiny little versions of their parents. Um, and yeah, Dad's in here. But like, we know what he was like with the last lot. Um, but he doesn't seem to be wiggling as much, but I swear I could see. Just before he moved forward, when I shone the camera earlier, oh my goodness, if it would focus. Um, I just swear I could see another batch of eggs in front of his face but he doesn't seem to be as fiercely protecting them from the light um there we go I just felt like I could see something there that's not his nostril can you see what I'm talking about um oh gosh it's probably just going to be stuff on the camera actually and actually not get uh, a good look but no so hopefully he will get back on eggs again um if he's not already the females are all, all very much ready this guy is very much ready as well but they don't seem to like him um so yeah the ladies just hang out down the back of everywhere quite shy during the day oh my gosh there's loads of them down here yeah she looks nice and fat again so and um, everybody's looking really, really good. The Brokis are super, super splendid. Really settled. I'm so pleased with this delivery. They did so, so well, bless them. Um, 
and it looks like their barbels are starting to grow back on some of them that had um, like some of these ones here slightly rubbed faces doesn't look like they are getting any secondary infections from that so that's really really good we love the brocus here we go and down in this tank um, we've got the uh, little royal acaras um, diademas, acridens diademas, and uh, we've got. Oh, my Magnum Pipera was out. That one's mine. I had it since it was very, very small. Um, this is one of the Flash Placos. That looks like a male to me with the big head, um, but I would have to double check the odontoids. I don't know whether the Flash would pick them up. Um, no, I can't see any. Um, yep, so gorgeous Flash Placo here. Um, really nice to see these um, doing well. This one seems to be quite active um, and they're, they're all just waiting for their food at the moment. I haven't fed anyone yet today. So all of these uh, little, little uh, Akaras are all hanging around wondering what I'm doing. But no, they are doing really, really well and um, yep, super pleased with the flashbackers. These are adults, so they're about six, seven inches, including the tail. Really, really nice size. Um, and yeah, there are two more in here of these same sort of sizes. Another female um, that I know is 100% female because she literally had eggs nearly coming out of her. Um, there she is. And then yeah, so um, tanks up this end of Joe Walsh change in the next couple of days. A little bit of organic detritus in here. Um, but it's nothing to worry about. These guys can deal with it. A um, couple of very bristles as usual. Uh, these little Akaras are doing really, really well as well. They are so super friendly. So, so super cute. I think they've already grown a little bit as well. So that's nice. Which is the same for these Oscars as well. These uh, Astronotus Crassipinus. So I am keeping two of these. Um, but we've still got a couple left that need to go to new homes. But my goodness, are they growing? I always forget how fast Oscars grow. Um, normally about an inch a month. Inch or two inches a month if you're doing well. Um, so the ones I would like to keep are, there's one that's basically all black, um, that one there has basically no gold on it whatsoever, the reflections are so bad on here. Um, and then there's another one in here that's um, got lots of spots and is really really pretty and really really friendly, I think it's this one here that's always the first to my fingers. Um, it's got really nice spots going up its side um, like the planets, um, so on the other side of it it's just really really spotty. Um, but there's a couple in here that look like that, so I just need to pick. But they're doing really, really well. We've got the birch in here, the reed fish, um, just a couple of different bits and pieces. Um, but no, these astronauts to cross pinnace, they are growing like weeds. They are doing really, really well. Super, super healthy and happy now. Um, and yeah, no, I moved the uh, Corridorus culture over into here because it's just about cool enough. Um, but I didn't want uh, too many of those quarries into the brocus. Um, because obviously it's a lot of space and these guys are quite big. Um, they're not going to breed in here with all these Oscars. Um, and yeah, then I need to work out something to do with my um, oscillated bush fish because it's actually quite stressed out in here. So that fish might be moving somewhere, um, but it can swallow anything up to two thirds its length, so I can't just put it in with anything. Um, but no, it, it does seem a little bit stressed. I think the Oscars are a little bit too much for it. And you'll have to bear with the uh, Halloween lighting here with the uh, the light bar underneath me here because it looks like I'm doing some sort of Hotel Transylvania thing. But um, the plants are doing really, really well, um, both sales-wise and just actually they haven't melted or died or anything just yet. Um, so I wasn't quite expecting some of them to be as popular as they were. It was more just an experiment because I don't really want fish up in these tanks. They are too high up. Like if I if I lift you up level with the with the tanks, look, it's well above my head. Um, so I have to stand on a chair to get in these and catching fish, especially placos and stuff out of them. It was just a bit of a pain um, because they used to have filters built into them. So I don't know if you can see, but there's actually these little glass notches, and the placos know that I can't get them, and they nestle into those little notches. That. So anyway. I've just got these in here and I am going to pop some filters in and put my pea puffers in here so that they are naturally pest free. I don't want to use any wormers or any alum or anything um, because some wormers can stick on plants and really wreak havoc with um, snails after a while. So I don't want to use any chemicals or anything to kill any pests, but I do not want snails, leeches, eggs, anything on that because um, it's really annoying having loads and loads of snails in a big display tank. 
Um, so I'm going to be putting some of my pea poppers in these tanks. So you can see some bubbling and you would normally expect that to be purling but that is actually because it's a city stream like this this is actually where the plants have been damaged a little bit and um, as they're photosynthesizing that air is leaking out of the slightly damaged areas but no i had a little bit of fun trying to get the sad to, uh, to sink um I stuffed it in this uh, bucket of gravel i didn't want any gravel in here because of the aforementioned snail issue i want to be able to get to all the snails and make sure that there's no snails in with these plants um, but everybody else is looking really, really good. I'm enjoying these lotuses. Um, Limnophilia, it's one of my favourite plants. The Anubias that came in are really, really nice as well. These are big Anubias nanas. Um, nice, mature, converted ones. Um, I'm not convinced the Limnophilia and the Ultaranthra are converted. Everything else is, I think. Um, the sand is, definitely. I'm not convinced everything else is. Um, and then yeah, these java ferns, that's a little bit interesting. I haven't had them like this before where they don't have a roost on them. So these are just leaves, these are just leaves um, that have been cut off from other plant. So I'm not convinced that these are going to go out to people. I'm probably going to hold on to these because basically what's going to happen now is all, all up underneath the undersides of these leaves, um, there's loads of like little seed things which are the baby Anubias, which are going to grow. I can't find any because none of the leaves are going to the right way around. There you go. Um, so all of these are little baby Anubias. So basically now this leaf has been cut off, these are all going to sprout roots. Um, but people don't really want that in their tanks because they're going to take a while to do that. So I'm probably going to propagate all of these out into nice little baby converted um, ammonia plants, Anubias plants, java ferns. Um, but everything else is looking really, really good. And yeah, I should be able to get loads of java ferns out of this. Um, but I can't imagine people are going to want that in their display tanks. Um, so it's all just stuff that I've had luck with. Stuff that I know will grow in your average aquarium. Um, with some good lights and maybe some root tabs under there. You don't have to be an expert. I have super, super mega planted CO2 for these. Um, and yeah, I'm pretty pleased with how this looks, to be honest. It's um, just an experiment. Um... But it, it, it does look quite nice to have plants in here. Okay, look away now if you're scared of spiders, but I have just found uh, uh, an arachnophobe's worst nightmare in this tank. I just looked across and I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Can you see it? Ah, what is that doing in the tank? It's huge as well. It's a big old garden spider. Look, compared to the placos. Oh, I'm not even funny about spiders, but that's just made my skin crawl a little bit because it's just like in an unfamiliar place. Like, what is it doing there? Oh no. Colombian zebras! You got invaded! I don't. I would be really shocked if it's alive. Shall I poke it? <laughs> oh my god, right. Imagine if it's alive. Oh no. But we could save it. I doubt it is. Yeah, that is a. An X spider. I think it is a spider. I don't think it's a shed. I'm pretty sure that there is. Yeah, it was. I don't know. Maybe we should get it out and put it in the sunshine. Maybe it's um just gone dormant or something, and it's still alive. I always like to give these things a go, you know. We'll pop it back outside, back in nature, so some bird can pick it off or something. Um, if it is dead. How weird. <laughs> Alrighty then, gonna leave it here for today then guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed our little delivery today. And um, yeah, I will see you in the next video. Cheers, bye bye.